Has it become extremely difficult for you as a survivor of narcissistic abuse to be around loud noises? Like you can't stand them, it bothers you a lot. Have you become hyper sensitive to the sounds in your environment? Does it feel like you can tell who the person is or what mood they are in by the sound of their footprints? Do you hear ringing, buzzing or pulsating sounds or sensations in your ears that seems to get louder the more stressed you are? If your answer is a yes to any of these questions, let me tell you one thing very clearly. You are not crazy and your symptoms may be related to the trauma you have endured in the narcissistic relationship. Let's talk about it more in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe before we begin because your subscription to the channel may help in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Today's episode is going to be all about understanding how hypersensitivity to sound is a narcissistic abuse trauma related symptom and how you could possibly heal it. First of all, let's try to understand and find out the origin of this hypersensitivity to sounds in your surroundings. When you are in a narcissistic relationship, you are overwhelmed all the time. I have explained it so many times that your nervous system is pushed to stay in a survival mode. And that survival mode is constant. It's not like you are in survival mode like for a minute or so and then you are fine, you're relaxed, you're chilling out. That doesn't happen. You stay in the survival mode right from the day they start devaluing you until they discard you even after because you might have to co-parent with them or they may be your parents or they may be someone you may not be able to leave easily. Words won't be enough for me to express what kind of damage that kind of stress, chronic stress causes because we're not designed to live in that state. We are not a reptile anymore. We're not designed to fight, flight, freeze or fawn. If that is all you had to do in the narcissistic relationship, I can imagine the myriad effects you might be struggling with right now. You develop hypersensitivity to sounds the moment your middle ear gets impacted due to the prolonged exposure to chronic stress in a narcissistic relationship. All the sounds that you hear are accentuated. They are amplified. Why? Because your ear has to be hyper attuned to the environment. It has to know and detect when the threat is approaching and when you might be harmed so that the alarm can be raised so that you can prepare yourself for the outfall. I can bet a lot of narcissistic survivors can very well detect the narcissist's presence just by the sound they make when they move their body. Do you agree with me? Are you one of those? Let me know in the comments. Eventually, your eardrum gets involved and impacted and the sounds that you hear their volume is naturally increased, sent to the brain, those signals are processed and you become hyper aware of what is going on in your surroundings. You may wear all the earbuds, you may really shut your ears, have soundproofing all around you and still might be able to know what's going on outside, who is out there, what's happening during the night and you may not be able to understand like what else do I need to do? Why this hyper awareness? because your brain is trying to protect you and this is just one of the manifestations of your strongly built protective mechanisms. You may understand it this way. Being in a narcissistic relationship is like being left alone in a pitch dark room. It's big. You know there are walls but you do not know where they are. You know there is a door that can give you the exit but you do not know how to find it, where to go. You can't see the only thing you can do is you can hear because the abuse is subtle, the abuse is hidden. This is just a metaphorical way of understanding how the abuse happens and impacts you. You are made to believe it's your doing, you are the crazy one and that is what this darkness is all about. You don't see things as they are. That is where the cognitive resonance comes from. So naturally, if this room is fi filled with predators, you are surrounded by dangers and you have to find your way out. What will you do? 
your ears will become sharper. They will listen a lot more. The hypersensitivity of your ears is nothing but a biologically correct response and reaction to the narcissistic environment because the primal parts of your brain, the lower parts of the brain, perceive it like a jungle, like a forest that is filled with all types of wild animals who, that could kill you. So you have to be prepared. You have to know what's going on. You have to be able to hyper attune to the sound, you know, to the crackling. Maybe a twig breaks and you're like, oh, what was that? That is the kind of the, this, the response that has been activated, which is to say you're not crazy. You're not making it up. Your problem with loud noises is not your problem with your ego. It is how you are responding to your environment. Now, let's talk about tinnitus for a second. A study published in October of 2018 proved that chronic stress is one of the primary causes behind this hearing problem. Results showed that about 10 to 60 percent of chronic tinnitus patients suffer from depressive disorders and 28 to 45 percent with clinically relevant anxiety symptoms. What does that tell you? It tells you a lot about what you have been through. That ringing sound, that buzzing sound, those pulsations, you're not making them up. It's your body trying to speak to you, showing you, proving to you that you are with a monster, you're around a monster. If you're still in doubt about the nature of this person, look at your body, look at what's going on with it. Try to listen to these messages. I always say this, impact is always greater than intent. We may never be able to know very clearly what the intent was, but you can very clearly know what the impact is like. Impact is evident. Impact is backed up by research and studies. Impact is a language spoken by your body to tell you that you need to leave and never look back. Another symptom reported by a lot of survivors is the loud bang that they hear. Like it's the sound in their head, but it's really loud. And they don't know if it is real or not. Sometimes they have to ask their friends like, did you hear that? What was that? Oh, that was really loud. And it's so irritating. It's so discombobulating and disorienting because you don't know whether it happened in reality or not. And sometimes it's continuous. It just, somebody is banging on your head. It's like your head is shooting. It's not just the pain. It is the sound that goes on and on. And sometimes it, it jolts you out. It just makes you really anxious and nobody understands why. Like, what was that reaction about? Only you heard it. And it is a trauma response as well related to narcissistic abuse. Now that we have covered these three responses, hypersensitivity to sounds, loud noises, and listening a lot more than you're supposed to listen, and then comes the tinnitus, the ringing sound, the buzzing sound, finally, the loud banging sound. These three are the main responses that survivors develop. I really wonder if you developed something else related to sound, like if there was something else going on with you that you couldn't understand and possibly can make sense of it now that you know sound problems or hearing problems can be connected to psychological stress. Drop your answers in the comments below. Share your experiences. Who knows, you might end up helping a lot of survivors. How do you heal all of this? Now that we know what the problem is, how do we heal it? You have to start at the root level. Root level is something that I have always talked about and I'll repeat myself by saying that you have to work on your nervous system. If your nervous system is dysregulated and it's hyper attuned to your environment and you are in a dysregulated hyper vigilant state most of the time, you are either in hyper arousal like fight flight mode or you are in hypo arousal, you are frozen and you're depressed. Of course, all of these responses are going to stay dominant. It's only when you come back to a you know, to a basic rhythm that is normal and you activate your parasympathetic nervous system, as I was talking about it earlier, you will see a significant and exponential decrease. Your sensory awareness and sensory perceptions will normalize and you 
will not be bothered by these problems as much. That is what I have personally experienced and that is what I recommend. The second step is if you are struggling with this problem a lot, find your quiet place, you know, maybe your car. If you have children, they're loud all the time, you do not know what to do, you need to have a quiet place. That is controlled. For example, your own little uh, place for meditation. Maybe your car, as I gave an example earlier, somewhere where, uh, where you can control the sounds that you can hear so that you can just find that calmness and naturally let your nervous system work it out because it won't have the need to keep searching for different sounds. In other words, make it sound safe and give your ears a rest from all the work they have been doing for years. That way you will be able to help them heal, you will be able to help your brain heal and overall your body will heal as well. That was it for today's episode. I hope you found it insightful. If you did, let me know in the comments and check out my Heal After Narcissistic Abuse recovery program. That will help you further in understanding how you can heal all the health related problems. The link is above. You can click the i button or you can find it in the description. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.